Did you know that the number one killer of men and women is heart disease? So to protect yourself, it's important to know your family history, your risk factors, know those warning signs and symptoms, and if you experience them, seek emergency care immediately. One local man did just that, and fortunately, he was at the St. John's ER when his heart stopped. Here's Dan's story. I'm Dan Moen of White Bear Subaru. Dan Moen has a recognizable and gifted broadcasting voice, which he uses to promote White Bear Acura, where he's the general manager. Dan feels he's been given an even greater gift, the gift of life. My birth mother uh, died giving birth to me. She was in an iron lung. So it was a real... I'm just lucky to be here in that respect. And he feels even luckier that he's lived to reach the age of 59. My dad had heart problems and uh, succumbed to, to heart disease. Uh, I had three brothers all die of heart attacks in their, uh, all in their 50s. Um, my last living brother also had a heart attack, but he's doing fine, and then myself. When he was just 46 years old, Dan suffered his first chest pains and heart problems. Four years later, he suffered a massive heart attack. The symptoms first came on when he was at work. He was just 50. I was doing fairly well and you know, on all the cholesterol medicines and everything you would take. And uh, uh, one Saturday I was at the office and had a symptom I'd never had before and that was uh, like a flu type symptom. I never had that. I had everything else from arm pain to you know, the heart pain, the, the chest pain. and. Uh, this was like a flu symptom. He left work early, went home, and right to bed, but he got worse. God was watching us that day. His wife, Joanne, who was at her son's baseball game that evening, got a frantic call from her 10-year-old daughter that Dan wanted her to call 911. Joanne says paramedics rushed Dan to the St. John's Hospital Emergency Department. Dan seemed to do better once there, but his doctor insisted he stay the night. He left, and about five minutes later, my eyes rolled behind my head and went into cardiac arrest. So I'm out in the hallway screaming that something's wrong with my husband and they rushed right in and uh, there was probably seven, eight doctors in there reviving him because he was dead for six minutes. Once stabilized, a Healthiest Ambulance transported Dan to St. Joseph's Hospital and the Healthiest Heart Care Center. It was a slow process getting him back, but they did keep him comatose for, mm, I want to say seven days so they could... Um, let the heart heal a little bit. You know, I was pretty lucky to be here today, but anyways, they uh, uh, took me there, they did that, and they kept me in induced coma. It was amazing. 1827 for a medical, having chest pain as a child. Level medical. Every day, Healthiest Transportation Medical Services saves lives, transporting more than 30,000 patients every year. Paramedics are kind of the unsung heroes of medicine. They're out uh, in people's homes, they're out on the roadways, uh, they're out in really difficult and sometimes even dangerous conditions bringing patients into the emergency department so we can take care of them. And every year, Healthiest Emergency Departments at St. John's, St. Joseph's, and Woodwinds treat more than 100,000 patients. And the demand for these emergency medical services continues to increase. This year, with the influenza outbreak, we're seeing actually record numbers of people. Uh, people are having trouble getting into primary care clinics. Uh, and sometimes the emergency department is the health care resource that's always available. Dan and Joanne are grateful to everyone at Healthiest Emergency Medical Services for being there for him. You know, I wouldn't be here today. They didn't bring me back from at St. John's. And obviously, when I went to St. Joe's, you know, they did everything that, uh, you know, got me to where I am today. They kept him alive, and I couldn't thank him more. I mean, I don't even know how to thank him. I don't even know how I did thank him, but they did it. They did it, and they, uh, thank you. I mean, I just, I'm so thankful that I've uh, had this second chance. Back to Inside Healthcare here in the studio. We're talking about what you can do to protect yourself against heart disease, the number one killer of women and men. The American Heart Association says it's important to know your risk factors, exercise regularly, and learn more about heart healthy eating and to help us.
give us some advice on how we go about doing that, we're pleased to have with us Sarah Bernstein. She's a fitness and nutrition specialist from Woodwinds Ways to Wellness. Thanks, Sarah, for taking time to be with us. Thanks for having me, So what would be those top three things on heart-healthy eating? What exactly is that? So the top three things, it's actually much easier than you think, and it should be how everybody eats. A healthy diet, especially from the Heart Association recommendations, are how everyone should eat. The top three things would be fruits and vegetables, and how often have we heard that? But really, we're, we're eating less and less, and that's where we're getting all our antioxidants that protect ourselves from damage that's occurring every day, kind of like the rusty nail. So mm -hmm. we need to eat our fruits and vegetables. The number two thing would be limiting our saturated fat, and that has creeped up, and our total fat has creeped up, but the type of fat that we're eating has creeped up quite a bit as well. We're eating more red meat, which has a lot of saturated fat and cholesterol. We're not eating as many plant-based foods, like fatty fish or nuts and seeds. And the third thing would, would just be to look at your fiber. We're eating, you know, carbohydrates aren't bad. We're just eating the wrong types of carbohydrates, white, fluffy carbohydrates that don't give us a lot. You know, sometimes it's deceiving, too, when you look at a, a loaf of bread or a product and it says it's um, healthy for you, but you have to look at those first ingredients to say if it has whole grains in it or Absolutely. whole wheat or... There's lots of information on whole grain and multi-grain and cracked wheat. What we really need to look for are two things. We need to flip that package over, look at the ingredient list for fiber. You want to have at least three grams of fiber. And the other healthy tip that you can look for on the label is the American Heart Association has a check mark on the outside. And that check mark is um, certified in how much saturated fat, total fat, trans fat, and how much fiber is in that product. And how do you know that, I mean, how do you know which one is the best one for you again? Yeah, so all fiber is good, but the one we're looking for is soluble fiber, and that one has um, a heart helper that helps lower your LDL. Soluble fiber is an oat bran, oatmeal, and fruits and vegetables as well. What about if you tend to go out to eat a lot, like a lot of people do at restaurants and especially fast food restaurants, yeah. how do you make sure you're having a heart healthy diet then? There are lots of good choices and I tell a lot of my clients in Ways to Wellness when they're eating out, think of how they can get some vegetables in that entree. Order an extra side of vegetables, look for the lean meats and the, and the brown rice that they have it. More and more restaurants are having those healthy options available. Salads can be good. The type of oil, however, on the salad dressing may be filled with omega-6 fatty acids. We're trying to get more of the omega-3 from the fish oils and also canola oil. So canola oil-based salad dressing would be great to do. And maybe have that dressing on the side, too. Absolutely. If you like salad, everything goes on the side. <laughs> what other tips would you say? Um, it's not only what you eat, but also where you store your fat as well that's important. Yeah, instead of jumping on that scale and just looking at the number, if your BMI is high, it really matters where you carry your weight. So we do a waist to hip measurement. Um, we measure just in inches around your abdomen, right right by your belly button, and then around your hips. Um, a ratio of uh, 0.80 or lower for women and a 0.90 or lower for men. And what is that considered heart exactly? healthy? The ratio of inches uh, divided waist divided by your hips. The more abdominal weight you carry, that signifies more visceral fat stores around your heart. And that's the dangerous type of fat. Not so much what we carry maybe in our cellulite in our legs or in our arms. That's not the risk factor. It's really the abdominal weight. So the same kind of fat that you might have around the middle is also surrounding that heart and the other organs? Exactly. So when you have, um, you have a, no a number of clients that you help, with weight management and things like that. What advice do you give to them on heart healthy diets? Yeah, the biggest piece I can take away, it's really not that difficult to do. Um, plan your diet around your vegetable first. We always plan it around the meat. So plan it around the vegetables first and then add some healthy grains in there that have some fiber, whole wheat, brown, pasta. Um, and then add your meat as kind of the accent piece and if we can eat more fish. And the biggest thing I tell people is move, get moving somehow because exercise as a personal trainer in Ways to Wellness, we've got to move to keep that heart healthy as a pump as well. And you've actually had clients that have seen results, right, that have turned their life around by losing weight, getting more active. Absolutely. By, by making small little changes to their diet, maybe eating a, one more serving of vegetables or changing that brown rice or white rice to brown rice, they've seen drops in their cholesterol level by 10 points, by more. Wow. And so really small changes add up in the long run to big results. What final advice would you have for our, our viewers listening? The final advice would be exercise, get those vegetables in, and it's not that hard to get. So a lot of times when people are thinking about heart disease, 
maybe they go in, they have a heart attack or they get diagnosed with heart disease. This is all about prevention. So really any age can come. You could be 18 years old and be interested in preventing heart disease and come to this program. So the Getting Started program, you would have a visit with Dr. Rankari. She would go through all of your risk factors. It would include blood tests, your cholesterol, um, fasting blood glucose, and a C-reactive protein, which looks at inflammation that can be happening in the body. Also, a baseline EKG would be done, and the visit with Dr. Rankari would go through all of that, your family history, your exercise history, your weight, coming, coming together um, using the Framingham and Reynolds risk scores and determining what is your risk factor for actually having heart disease in 10 years, in five years, what is the percentage? So it can actually tell you if yes. you're at risk for heart disease just a couple of years down the road perhaps. Even. Right, so for instance, um, it would take a person's, all of their risk factors and say, you know, Jody, you are at risk for having um, heart disease. Your risk is 10% in five years that you would have a heart attack or 30%. If people want to do additional services, they certainly can, and we do um, calcium scoring, which is a CT scan, um, and that looks at calcium buildup in the coronary arteries. Um, we also do a VO2 max with um, a test with Dr. Roncari, so it's a treadmill test with the mask. A lot oh, of people are that. familiar with that, <laughs> yeah. and an EKG on. And so Dr. Roncari, with the nutrition and fitness specialist, would be looking at the screen as you're on the treadmill, determining whether there um, are any risk factors that you might have heart disease. So it's a really great way for people to get more information about themselves. One thing that people do like um, that have gone through the program is they get to sit down with a cardiologist and have a conversation, just like we're having right now. So it's not a, a quick um, visit in with the doctor. It's just more about having a conversation about prevention instead of talking about symptoms and illness and um, traditional sick care. Yeah, I mean, what you were saying at the very beginning is that tr traditionally the first time you see a cardiologist is after you've had a heart attack, and that's when yeah. you find out you have heart disease. or Sometimes it's too late. The right. first time you know you have heart disease, is, it could be fatal. And traditionally what happens too is then you go into a cardiac rehab program where you look at nutrition and fitness. And with this, we're looking at doing that ahead of time. So if, you, if you're noticing that, wow, every time I go into the doctor, my weight's creeping up and my cholesterol seems to be climbing and now I'm on Lipitor and I've just added in a high blood pressure medication, it's really time to, you know, take some focus on yourself and lose some weight, start eating healthier. It's all the things that Dr. Lowe just talked about, very simple things that you can do. It doesn't have to be complicated. But um, with our cardiac wellness program, what we're doing is we're integrating lifestyle changes with the cardiologist to prevent heart disease. You were telling me before we started that this is one of the only programs of its kind here in the Twin Cities in Minnesota? Right. And we, we really felt strongly that it's so important because heart disease is largely preventable, most of the risk factors are preventable, that we do something to prevent it instead of just waiting to get sick. So once you do one of these programs, whether it's just the first diagnostic one or you do something further, so then how do you prevent it? You're saying you make these lifestyle changes, but what do you, how does someone, once they say, okay, you're at risk for it, then what happens? So what we do, um, after meeting with Dr. Rankari, there's several different options that people can do based on um, their financial, uh, what they want to pay for a program. So they can do as much or as little as they want. But always you're going to meet with a health and wellness coach, which is about sitting down and discussing with you, okay, here's your risk factors. What do you want to do about it? Where are you most ready and willing to start? Everybody's going to be different. We can't, just can't tell someone, you need to lose weight, you need to eat healthier and move. Someone, it's not going to do it. It's not going to do it. So mm -hmm. we really need to motivate people, and that's what that missing link is, is how do we motivate people to do this? Because we all know we need to do it, but why aren't we? So... From there, it's going to depend on you what you're going to do to prevent heart disease. Many people might have a goal of, I want to reduce my blood pressure and get off my blood pressure medication. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to start eating more fruits and vegetables, start doing 30 minutes of cardiovascular exercise three times a week. Um, and then we just move on from there. Maybe some people want to reduce their stress. Um, maybe some people want to go from drinking 14 cups of coffee down to two cups of coffee a day. It's, um, it's really individualized and customized. And I think what we had mentioned earlier with Dr. Lotu on the diabetes is also another risk factor for increased risk factor for heart disease. So mm -hmm. I know that some people, when they've lost some weight, 
suddenly they don't have to take the medication or even insulin in that in some instances. Right. A lot of times when people do lose weight, they start exercising just a modest weight loss to 10% can reduce your blood pressure to a normal level, um, reduce your blood sugar so that it's within the normal range. So those are all really positive things that are just done through lifestyle. And to think about not taking a medication, that's what a lot of our clients want to do. Their goal is, I don't want to take Lipitor. I don't want to take um, high blood pressure medication. And about the ways to wellness, um, some of the programs that you offer, they're so tailored toward the individual. Why don't you kind of tell us a little bit about those different programs that someone, if they're diagnosed, if they go through the cardiac wellness mm -hmm. program, they say you're at risk, mm -hmm. what would be some of the options that they could do? So some of the things that we offer at Ways to Wellness is we offer personal training, we have Pilates Reformer, we um, have nutrition consultations, health and wellness coaching. Within the cardiac wellness program, we have four different programs to choose from that have bits and pieces of all these, so it's really customized. And we call those programs Getting Started. Then we have the Selby program, which is a little bit more. It includes a membership at our facility and also 24-7 fitness center. Um, and also 12, 30-minute visits with whatever professional you want to see outside of the cardiologist. And then as you ramp up to the next program, the Grand, it includes a little bit more. And then up to the Summit program, which includes a little bit of everything. So you're going to get the calcium score, the CT calcium score, um, the VO2 max testing, and everything. So w why did um, Waste Wellness and the cardiologist decide to have this program, offer this program? We really just, we thought, we, this is something we need to be doing healthcare. Um, we really need to change the focus from sick care to well care. So it needs to be about prevention. And what better way to do it than to team up with the two experts in their area and integrate it into one. So that was really the reason. And the risk factors are largely preventable. Unlike once you have a heart, a heart, heart attack and you have um, rehab and stuff, is there, does insurance cover any of this at all? Unfortunately, right now, insurance doesn't cover it. Um, the way that our health care system works, this is not something that um, hopefully it will in the future. So right now, we're look we are documenting everything that we're doing, researching our outcomes. And so hopefully with having outcomes, we'll be able to get some of these services covered through health insurance. If um, someone is interested in learning more about the cardiac wellness program or about ways to wellness, how do they go about doing that? They can visit our webpage um, at www.healtheast.org slash ways to wellness and click on the cardiac wellness program on the left hand side of the page. They can also call at 232-1926 and we can give them more information that way. We always offer free 30 minute consultations. Brenda. Always a pleasure to have you with us. Glad you could be back, and especially during Heart Month to mm -hmm. talk about this really cool brand new program. So thank you so much. Thank you. Brenda Navin with um, Health East and the Director of Wellness and Health. So thank you so much. Thank you. Now for an incredible rescue in St. Paul this past year. A Wisconsin man was at work in St. Paul when his heart suddenly stopped. Thanks in part to a new CPR device, he was kept alive for more than two hours without a beating heart. It's believed to be the longest recorded CPR in U.S. Local doctors and firefighters who helped save that man were recently reunited with him when they all received the 2014 John Nassau Firefighters Award from the St. Paul Firefighters Foundation. It's an amazing story. Take a look, everyone. It was a pretty amazing um, um, story of survival. When Chaplin walked up and I knew it wasn't good and I didn't, you know, and in the ER, it, you know, didn't look good either. His heart wanted to beat. Uh, he, he was trying to breathe. He wanted to be alive. I call him my miracle man. No, I wasn't short of breath, but uh, I was sweating, but, uh, and I was kind of tired, but it was 93 degrees out, so, and I had been cutting brush all day. Yeah, I thought maybe I got a little bit of heat stroke or something like that, and uh, so then he was going to take me down to regions, and 
Um, I don't remember walking back to my shop, but I guess I walked back to my shop and that's where I went down. We knew right off the bat he was in cardiac arrest. I had hooked him up onto the monitor, uh, had Larry stop doing CPR. I actually got a ventricle fibrillation on the monitor. Actually shocked him once, and Larry continued on with CPR. We've had the Lucas for about a year, year and a half, and for all cardiac arrests or suspected cardiac arrests, we automatically just bring the Lucas in with us. So we start with the manual CPR, check pulse, check the rhythm, and then we automatically put him right on the, the Lucas device because it is an effective machine. We noticed that his eyes were fluttering, that he was actually somewhat being kept alive with a Lucas device. And we noticed that, started asking him a few questions. We'd ask him a question. And we said, you know, if you understand us, blink your eyes. And he did. He understood us and blinked. They recognized immediately that he was neurologically sound, so they uh, minimized the amount of out of hospital time and transferred him uh, almost immediately to Regions. Uh, Regions recognized the same thing and absolutely refused to quit. It was on him when I went in the ER, and that was really scary to see that device on. I mean, now it's, I'm thankful for it. Um, and I just held his hand and said, you're strong, you gotta fight, you know, you gotta fight, you gotta stay here, I need you. We were able to shock him back briefly for a few minutes, long enough to get him up here um, and start the procedure. But um, soon enough, within a couple of minutes of the procedure, before even starting to fix, um, he went back into a ventricular fibrillation, means there's no blood flow, there's no, no heartbeat, it's just fibrillating of the heart. So we placed the machine on him and the machine kept him alive and pumping blood to his brain and body and we were able to, to work and open the artery while the machine was running. And usually if people come back after half an hour or 45 minutes it's already quite a miracle that he survived a total of 2 hours 45 minutes of CPR, most of it with the machine, so that was amazing. Mr. Frankel's survival is pretty illustrative of what you can do with a systems approach to CPR. He had bystander CPR, he had first responder CPR, he had advanced cardiac life support CPR, he came to a hospital that's very good at this and has got the latest including Lucas um, and a very active cath lab with a lot of excellent physicians in it. It's just from the minute he went down to the minute he was discharged this was a systems approach. The next thing I remember about six, seven days later waking up in the hospital. I didn't have any broken ribs or anything, but, but uh, it, my chest was sore. He had such a long um, period without any um, heart pumping just being um, helped by the Lucas device. So the odds were not um, very high that we could bring him back. And uh, it's more amazing, his story, that uh, with the help of the cooling as well, that he woke up completely normal without any deficit and, uh, and felt fine the next day. Mrs. Frankel would be a widow if it wasn't for the work that St. Paul has done researching active compression, decompression CPR over the last 22 years. I think that uh, the citizens of this city, uh, as well as the state, need to come t to recognize that more of them are surviving because of work that the fire department did. It's interesting, it's actually kind of come full circle because one of the big sponsors of uh, St. Paul getting Lucas was the St. Paul Fire Fighters Foundation saved his life and everyone that worked on him saved his life and it was just a miracle. But I'm so thankful that they kept going and thankful for that Lucas device. 
enjoy life a little bit better. But I got too many people to think about and take care of, so it's not my time to go yet. So I got other things, I got things to do.